everyone, it's Stephanie here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be creating with the new Lavish Lilies flower stamp. This is a gorgeous stamp that's going to stamp a cluster of lilies with some beautiful leaves as well. So I have a panel of white cardstock that measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I will end up trimming this down so that it measures four inches by five and a quarter, but for right now I'm going to stamp this image right onto this full panel. I'm going to use extreme black ink to do the inking. And that's because I know I want to use Copic markers to color in my image, and this is a Copic friendly ink. I'm going to stamp the image a couple of times, which is why I am using my Misty to do the stamping, and that's how I get a really nice solid black outline. And you can see here when I stamp this, that beautiful cluster of flowers that we get. This is probably one of my favorite images from the whole entire flower release. I stamped the image onto the original panel, and then I also stamped it onto two additional ones. And that's because I want to do some selective layering on parts of the flowers and leaves. So I wanna have some additional images that I can color just parts of and cut out with my scissors. So I've set those two additional panels aside for now, and I'm going to color in my main image. If I would have planned ahead of time and known which images I was going to cut out, I wouldn't have had to put so much time into those petals and leaves. But I really wasn't sure as I was coloring this, so I just colored the whole entire image as if you were going to see the entire thing. So I'm using my Copic markers and I'm starting off here with a very light green. My favorite color combination anytime I'm coloring leaves is YG01, YG25, and YG17. I just love how all three of these look together and I love that the leaves are really bright and vibrant. So I started off with the lightest color first and then I came in with my dark color and added some shading at the very base of the leaves. And then I came in with my medium color and just kind of blended that out so it all blended together. And the great thing about Copic markers is that you can continue to blend until you're happy with the color. It's not going to pill your paper at all so you can kind of go back and forth with the lightest, darkest, and medium until you have a color that you're happy with. So once I had all of the greens completely colored in, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the lilies. Lately, my favorite two colors to color in flowers have been purple and aqua but I decided to change it up a bit on these and use some corally pink colors. So I'm gonna be using some really light colors, which are R000 and R00. And then I'm gonna be bringing in some darker colors with the R30, R32, and R35. I want the lilies to kind of appear to be white on the ends, so I'm not gonna add a lot of color near the tips of each of the flower petals. So I'm gonna bring in the darkest color in the center and then just work my way through the darkest, through the mediums, all the way to the lightest, and just keep blending out that color until I'm happy with all of the individual petals. Once I got through the first round of blending, I realized I lost a lot of that darker color in the center and wanted to bring a little bit of it back, so I came in with the second to darkest and the darkest colors and just added a bit more color in the center of that. And that's gonna be the look I'm gonna go for on the rest of the flower, so I'm gonna jump ahead here. Once I finish the stamen in the center, I'm gonna just go ahead and color the rest off screen. So for the center of the lily, I used the lightest green color, and then I also used brown for the very tips of the stamen. Most pictures I saw online seem to have green and brown, and I really like the look of that with the coral color. All right, so now that we have the main image colored, I'm going to just use my colorless blender here and catch a little bit of bleeding that I had on one of the little petals there. The colorless blender just helps to kind of push that color back into the colored area. And now I'm going to start to color the individual pieces that I wanna to use to do the layering. So I'm just gonna kind of look at the main image and decide from there which ones I wanna layer. And I wanna do the layering two different ways. I wanna have one somewhere there just one layer, and then I wanna have somewhere we actually put two layers on to make it even more dimensional. So I'm just gonna very quickly color the images that I'm going to pick out, and I'm making sure to pick out images that I'm going to be able to cut out with my scissors. You can tell by looking at the flowers that there's lots of different petals that overlap or just kind of have a weird angle, so they really wouldn't work that well to cut out with scissors. So I just kind of picked the ones that I felt like I would easily be able to cut out, and then I just kind of picked if I wanted to have them just a single layer or a double and made sure to color the appropriate amount for what I wanted to do. And you can see I'm not taking any care to stay in the lines. It doesn't really matter since I'm going to be cutting them out with my scissors and I'm going to be cutting out right along the line. So if I kind of went out of the lines, it's not gonna matter at all. So it makes it much quicker to be able to color in these images. So I decided in the end to do three of the little images on a single layer and then two on a double layer. So I'm gonna go ahead here and finish up coloring. I'm gonna finish this petal here and then add one more at the end, this little tiny one. And then once I have all of these colored, I will use my scissors and cut them out. It didn't really take that long since they're pretty basic shapes. It was pretty quick and easy to kind of go around each image and cut it out. 
I did cut them all out separately first before I cut out the individual parts. And then once I have them all cut out, I always like to take a black marker and go around the edges of the cutout images. It just helps to cover up the white core of the paper and just makes them look completely finished when we layer them on top of the stamped image. So now I'm going to use my film adhesive and I'm going to start to layer these on top. I like to use my tweezers, it just helps with me being able to see where I'm lining them up. So I just put the foam adhesive on the back of them and use my tweezers to put them into place. So I'm going to do all of the single layers first, so I've layered all of those on. So I have two different petals and then I also have this bottom leaf. And then for these two other areas here, we're going to put foam adhesive on the back of both of them and then we're going to layer them one on top of the other. And what that's going to do is just going to give us a little bit more dimension on those two parts of the card which when you look from up above, you really can't even tell as I'm adding these, it's not super noticeable that there is dimension, but you'll see here once I get these last two added on and I lift up the panel and kind of show it to you from the side, you're really gonna see that great dimension that we're adding to this. And it looks even better because it's a flower image, so it almost brings that flower to life and makes it look as though it's popping off of the page. So you can see here now when I lift this up, that great dimension that we've created by layering just some of the petals on top of that main image. This is one of my favorite ways to add dimension to images. I just think it's so unexpected and I just think it gives it a really original look. So now to finish off the card, we're going to add a sentiment. So I've stamped out a little sentiment here from the Biddy Thanks and Gratitude stamp set. And I've added some foam adhesive to both ends since I am going to layer it over top of that little leaf image that we've added adhesive to. And then I'm going to put the entire panel onto a white card base. This is tone on tone, so you don't really see the difference between the card base and the panel but I really like the look of having it layered over top and didn't want to add any additional dimension in behind this. I really wanted the dimension to be focused on the flowers. And that is going to finish our card. So I hope today's video gave you some ideas on ways that you can create some really cool dimension on your images just by stamping additional images and cutting out portions of them and layering them on top of the original. If you did enjoy today's video, I would love it if you would give it a like and also subscribe to our YouTube channel so you are notified of all future videos. As always, I appreciate you being here for another video and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks so much for watching.